Before we get to the second part of this statement, let's talk a little bit about two different forms of presentation of expenses recognized in profit or loss statement. The first one is analysis of expenses by nature. Thus, an entity aggregates expenses within profit or loss according to their nature. For example, changes in inventories of finished goods and work in progress, raw materials, depreciation, transport costs, anything that is relevant for the company. Here, expenses are not reallocated among functions within company and therefore this method is more simple than the second one where the expenses are presented by function. Here, company must allocate expenses as part of cost of sales as minimum. For example, depreciation of production factory hall would be presented as cost of sales expense and depreciation of administrative building as administrative expense. In by nature statements such breakdown is not required as depreciation would go simply to the same line called depreciation. As we can see from our example, expenses are presented by function here. Now let's take a look to the second part, statement of other comprehensive income. Here, an entity must disclose at least each component of other comprehensive income classified by nature, but excluding share of associates and joint ventures. Share of other comprehensive income of associates and joint ventures accounted for by equity method is separate item shown here and total comprehensive income. When we look to components of other comprehensive income closely, what items do we see? There are certain gains and losses from revaluations of various balance sheet items such as available for sale financial assets, defined benefit pension plans, property. An entity is probably applying accounting policies that revalue certain matters directly to equity and not through profit or loss. As these revaluations are not made by equity owners, they must be reported in this statement of other comprehensive income.